Hey everyone, Mitash here. So today I want to give you guys a review of the one piece of tech that I've been using every single day for a year now, and that's of course my smartphone. It's the ZT Axon 7. So uh, this phone came out last year. Uh, it was a part of this trend we were seeing with flagship phones for budget prices. So this has the same specs as like a Galaxy S7 or a LG G5, but for about half the price, around $400. And while other budget flagship phones like the OnePlus 3 have gotten a lot of reviews and things like that, I feel like the Axon 7 never got as much love in the press. So I wanted, after spending a year with this, I wanted to give you guys a review of how it's like still and whether I think it's worth buying. So I want to start this review off by talking about the specs and build quality of this phone. So in terms of specs, it has a Snapdragon 820, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of onboard storage. Um, it also comes with a micro SD slot. Uh, it actually has a dual SIM card configuration, so you can have dual SIM card or you can have a SIM card and a micro SD slot, so it's pretty nice to have. Um, it's got dual front facing speakers, and those get really loud. They're actually really nice. The sound coming from it sounds really good. Um, it's got an all metal build, so they didn't cheap out there either. It um, feels really solid in the hand, it's got a nice heft to it. Uh, the one thing I don't like is the fact that they have curved edges on the sides, um, so it does make the phone a little slippery, so I would definitely put a case on it or a skin. Uh, I use the I use this as a speaking case that I've had. I've had it for a year and it's protected it pretty well. It's relatively thin, so it's nice to have too. Um, some of the other things, so it has a USB Type-C port, which is better than micro USB, at least it's future proof. Um, it has a headphone jack, something that we have to now mention in 2016 and 2017. Uh, it has a fingerprint reader, which is actually decently fast. It's not the fastest, I know something like the OnePlus 3T and OnePlus 5 now have like the fastest fingerprint readers, but this is pretty decent. So overall I would say that the hardware is really good. Um, there is one flaw with it and that's the capacitor buttons on the bottom. They're too close together and they're not backlit. So. At night, you're gonna hit the wrong button by accident. Over time, with muscle memory, you get used to it, and like at this point, I don't usually miss, and even when it's really dark, but it is kind of an annoying thing, and they could have just fixed it by just backlighting the buttons or allowing you the option to have software buttons like the OnePlus 3 does. But overall, hardware, great. In terms of screen, this thing has a 5.5 inch Quad HD display. It's uh, AMOLED and it has amazing colors. It's very vibrant. Uh, actually in the software you can set how colorful you want it to be. So you can set it to normal, colorful, or gorgeous as they call it. And you can even set the tinting to be warm or cool depending on how you like to have your phone. Uh, I personally just keep it at neutral and then usually keep it at colorful if not gorgeous because it does the colors really do pop and I like that a lot. So this is a very nice AMOLED display. Um, the one thing is it doesn't quite get as bright as like a Galaxy S7 display so outdoors it seems a little washed out. Still very readable but just a little washed out. The colors won't quite as pop, won't pop quite as much. Um, compared to a 2017 display however, uh, this is you can see like we do have pretty big bezels on the top and bottom. Uh, on the bottom we do have the capacitor buttons and so there's a reason for that, but the top is just kind of a strip to I guess make it more symmetric. Um, new 2017, all the flagships have the taller display with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Here we have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I don't think getting an 18 by 9 aspect ratio other than looking nice, it makes much of a difference. So. Overall, this display is great. If you get it, you're not going to be disappointed and you're, unless you're looking at it right next to like a Galaxy Note 8 display. So the next thing I want to talk about was the software. Now I gotta be honest, this is the thing that made me most apprehensive about buying a budget phone is the fact that I was worried it would not get software support. So I thought it started off with Mark and I figured it would probably just stay there for a while. Um, and also the custom UI that CT would put on. I'm used to having Nexus phones, I'm used to the stock experience, so I'm a little worried about that. Um, luckily for the custom launcher, you can just replace it. I, I use Nova Launcher and it's great. Uh, it lets you basically have all the regular feature and now even connects with Google Now, so you can just swipe over to Google Now just from the left side. Um, in terms of software though, uh, ZT has actually done a really good job at upgrading the software. I think they were the, one of the first companies to be out with the 7.1 update. 
7.1.1 I think it's currently what it's on. Um, and they've done a really good job. They've actually listened to the community a lot too, so they've put in features like uh, cus uh, guest user support, something that a lot of manufacturers just leave out because they figure nobody wants it, but they listened to the community, the community gave them feedback that they wanted this feature and then they implemented it, so it's been really good. Um, some of the things that they added to the software were mostly things like gestures and things that I've never used. I've turned all of those things off. Um, there's one that I kept on which is uh, three finger to take a screenshot so you can choose three fingers and it'll take a screenshot. Um, one of the nice things, if you, I don't know if you noticed that, is uh, you actually get a, when you do take a screenshot you get this nice little UI so you can add annotation and things like that. Something that iOS now does with iOS 11 but it has it built into this so that's pretty nice to have. Um, so the other things are like you can shake the turn on flashlight. I find it doesn't work very well, so I just turned it off. Um, one of the other things that they let you do is the capacitive buttons, you can actually choose what order they come in. So I know some people are used to Samsung phones, so you can put the multitasking on the left side, but I prefer regular, which is back button on the left side, and then multitasking on the right. So you can decide how you want to do that. Um, the one thing they didn't quite do right was implement the camera API. So um, they didn't fully implement the Camera 2 API that Google released a while back. And due to that, so if you want to download the Google Camera APK, I know that's floating around there, that allows you access to the HDR Plus stuff that Google does, you can't run it on ZTE. It's actually one of the few phones running a Snapdragon 820 that can't run the Google Camera APK. So just be aware of that. But overall, I would say that the software is fine. Uh, it's for as far as I know, slated to get Android O at some point, um, but right now the only phones with Android O is the Pixel phone, so I'm not really that worried about the fact that it doesn't have it yet. So the next thing I want to talk about in this review is the camera. So spec-wise, the main camera is a 20 megapixel shooter. It's got an f1.8 lens, it's got uh, phase detect autofocus, it's got OIS built in, and a dual tone LED flash. And the main and the selfie camera is just an 8 megapixel shooter. It's a pretty typical selfie camera. So in terms of the camera, I do want to give GT some credit. They I think they did a really good job in designing the camera software. So the camera app has everything laid out how it should be. Everything seems to make sense where it is. They even have a full manual mode, which is really nice to have on a camera. Um, the video mode is pretty good. Uh, the one thing is you can't set anything in video mode. You can't set the ISO or the white balance, but for most people that's pretty fine. Um, they have a beauty mode and so selfie camera. Not something I would use, but it's there if you want it. So in terms of image quality, I think that this camera takes some pretty good pictures in good lighting and then some pretty poor ones in low light. I think it, even though this camera has an f1.8 lens and OIS, it still struggles with noise. I'm not really sure why, I just think the uh, algorithms that they've used are not that good. That's part of the reason why I wanted to have the Google camera, that's why I wanted to be able to install the Google camera, but it doesn't work on this phone, so you're stuck with what you have. Um, to be honest though, I was more down on these pictures before I started doing this review. Once I actually saw them again, I was like, these actually aren't that bad. But I'm going to let you guys decide for yourself, I'm just going to be quiet and let you guys see the pictures that I've taken. This is some footage taken with the main camera, so it can do 4K at 30 frames per second, and it takes pretty good video. Uh, the one really nice thing about this is actually the audio. It comes across very clear, even in a loud, in loud environment. They've done a really good job on it here. Here's the front-facing camera, so you can see the quality here. It's 1080p, it's a little bright out here, Ooh, very bright out here. But you can see it does take pretty good video. So the last thing I want to talk about in this review was the battery life for this phone. So it has a 3250 mAh battery. It lasts me an entire day. You can easily get three to four hours of screen on time with this. And it just really, it's a pretty good battery. Uh, it also has Quick Charge 3.0, so in case you do need it, it will top up really fast. 
Um, it includes it in the, the charger is included in the box, so that's also a nice feature. And it also has this um, ultra low power mode, which will turn off everything except for calls and texts, and that's for like emergencies. Uh, but it says it gives it up to another eight hours of life, battery life. I've never really used this feature since it usually lasts me just fine, but it's there if you need it. So overall, I think this uh, hardware has held up really well in a year's time. It still feels fast and fluid. Uh, it's got almost the latest version of Android. It's missing some features from 2017 flagships, such as uh, the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, the bezel of screens, and the uh, water resistance. But I think that you can't really can't go wrong with this phone. I think it's still really great. Now I am going to caveat this with one thing. I've pre-ordered a Pixel 2 and that should be coming in soon. Um, I got it for two reasons mainly and one was for the software updates and the other was for the camera. I really wanted to see what new, what the new cameras have to offer and I feel like that Google's made some really good strides in that direction. But no matter what, this phone is not actually leaving my house. Um, I'm going to be playing with it still. My wife is actually going to take it over from her iPhone 6s so it's definitely still staying in the family. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. Um, links down below to the phone, the case that I have, and the uh, full size images for all the, all the pictures that you guys saw. And if you guys like this, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the Pixel 2 and the reviews that I will do for that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you'll be the first to know. And thanks for watching.